one of the very hot topics of any trade show, but maybe even more here in Japan, is of course robots. Uh, we're going to see something that is, I, I would say that is maybe almost like a world premiere. Henrik, what are we seeing here? We are seeing a robot which can unwrap the wrapping paper, which is very popular in Japan. Huh? We don't use wrapping in Europe, but in Japan all paper is wrapped. So what you see here is a robot which can wrap, and then we use our existing concept also to move it to the jogger. Yeah, so. Okay, and if you look at the robot, I mean, uh, this is like industrial scale robots, because we are going to, to see other booths with a lot of different robots. What is, what is to look for when you look into robots? You have to look for the speed and the lifting capacity. That means what it can produce. Yeah. That's the core of all this here. Huh? And then, of course, there's the price of the robot. Huh? And this here is an industrial robot, so it is lower priced than the cobots, which we'll probably see in all the other uh, systems here. Huh? We, we, we chose uh, an industrial robot because we also go with a scanner, yeah. so we, we can, in fact, protect the system. Huh? Yeah. But the, the concept was to make an economic uh, solution from the, from the... And this is a Yaskawa setup. When you buy like industrial scale robots, they are not like tailor-made to a specific industry. You buy a robot and then you learn it, right? A robot is basically stupid. Yeah. A robot can do nothing when you packed it out of, of the box. Huh? So it's the programming of the robot, which is the, the core matter here. Yeah. So the Yaskawa robot is coming from Yaskawa, Yaskawa stupid and we have then programmed it to make all the exercises it's doing here. Huh? And we are at, at Fujifilm uh, booth here at ICAS. Is this something that is, it will be sold f through Fujifilm? Yes. Okay. And what is uh, the, the types of company that would look into robot like this? Is it only the biggest ones or the smaller ones? Or where, where do we this is This is a tricky question because this ICAS here is also a B2 ICAS, the Inkjet B2. So you will see two B2 inkjet presses, no, this is not inkjet, but you will see two B2 presses from Fujifilm in this show. You have other B2 presses here. So some of the digital market is now focusing upwards to B2. And therefore Fujifilm also decided to make a B2 robot. Uh, so uh, this is smaller robots than we normally use. So we can only do B2 size, but the ones we have in Europe can do B1 and there will also come a B1 size for this solution here, looking a little bit different. And now we're starting to see what is happening. It seems that it is like having a knife uh, cutting the edges of the, of the pack. Yes, what, what, what we agreed upon was that we would take our robot, which is uh, feeding the jogger and a sheet cutter line, but as the Japanese want to unwrap the paper, they get all their paper wrapped. As they want to unwrap the paper, we decided we should also cut. And we also developed a very special thing here, which we call a glove system. Normally, if you should do that, you would use a, a tool change sequence, which is expensive and takes time. But we have made it now that it's a, this is a standard gripper. Yeah. It is a standard gripper, and then we have a glove system for it. Huh? So now it's at removing the paper. And as we spoke about back in Denmark some months ago. We, we are confused about this here. Yeah, because it's kind of strange that you spend a lot of energy wrapping the paper, yeah. and now we make robots to remove the wrapping. This is Japanese and Chinese market system. Eh? Yeah. And it's difficult to explain, but this is what they want. Eh? Yeah. And is this uh, like the first time in the world you have a robot that is yes. capable of this? We have uh, no other robots which can do this here. There are several systems complex systems we can unwrap paper, huh? but it's the first time we have a robot which can unwrap. Huh? And the, the combination is that you can unwrap and feed to the jogger in the same go. So basically, Henrik, uh, when you when now with the size of uh, the, the, the packages here, can they, that be variable or that has yes. to be like a fixed size? No, we can, we can do variable sizes. And is that in the programming or can the robot automatically you discover cannot this? See, you cannot see the touch screen. The robot is automatically uh, sensing the size of the paper, okay. but it's not sense. It will also sense. This should be a lifting table, so yeah. it would sense the height and move it upwards. Huh? But if you go for a stack of, let us say, three centimeters instead of 1.5, yeah. we have to key that into the to okay. the keypad. Okay. Huh? But that is easy because typically, That's if you good. have like a, for example, if you have a here, this you is can see a teach pad which we never let the printer operate. Okay. But there's a simple touch screen over here. You just key in that it'll be three centimeters instead of one and a half or four centimeters. Mm. 
So this, but, but what the robot is doing now is measuring the paper size. Huh? Yeah. And it doesn't have to do that every time. It's first time mission. Yeah. And it's just moving around and then we know the paper size. And this of course means that if you come with another paper size, you just measure yeah. and then the robot knows. Huh? Yeah. So we can go from big size to small size. And if you look at, I mean, maybe it's a uh, prejudice or maybe it's because I don't know enough, but if I look at it, it seems a bit slow. It is very slow, yeah. but uh, this is for the exercise here for the show. Okay, so you can we want, go faster. We, we, we could do that much faster. Okay, okay. So, but we have decided for this show that features are more important than speed. Yeah. So therefore we have shown everything here and we are using the di diagonal grip to air the paper, yeah. which we also know from what we're well, doing. You do it in hand, basically, yeah. right? And that, that gives this is, a, this is the best way of airing the sheets, sir, yeah, yeah. with a diagonal grip. Huh? Yeah. And, and we have done that with our robots back in Europe, our robot solutions there. Huh? Yeah. So what the, what the new thing is that we have integrated the, the wrapping part. Huh? Yeah. Years ago, we filmed a, uh, made a film with you also at uh, Steepo. Yes. And that was, a, that was a bigger system, right? But it was uh, mainly because this is a newer iteration, right? At, at the Stibo system, which was the first one, we used the dual arm robot from Yaskava. Yeah. Uh, this is a very expensive robot. Uh, so we decided to go for a more economical solution here, two industrial robots. We could have had uh, cobots here also. It will just make the solution more expensive. Eh? Let's go and check some cobots and other robots and Fine. AGVs and uh, MIRs or what are you yeah. calling the, them? I call them AGVs and AMRs. Eh? So Henrik, uh, we moved from um, the uh, Yaskawa uh, Fuji. Now we have a orange. This is called an AMR, autom automotive automatic mobile robots. Eh? And now we came from Fujifilm, but they cooperate. They, they are taking it from the print, printed press over there to here with that small AMR. Eh? And when you have a machine like that, that's also like a robot, of course, but is it programmed or does it work automatically or? No, this is, this is programmed, okay. but, but uh, you have to key in the, 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 the pass. Eh? Yeah. But it's a big computer, so you can key in many passes, and it, you can also key in alternative routes. So if there's an obstacle, it will drive around the obstacle. Huh? So the, the whole thing with these AMRs is that the navigation system is much, much, much more sophisticated than the navigation system on the old AGVs. Huh? The old AGVs first had a, a wire in the floor, and then they have some laser scanners up in the corners. But this is a much more flexible solution. But on top of that, there's of course a big difference that what we call AMRs are without forks. And AGV is with forks. So this is the whole concept, do we need pallets or don't we need pallets? If you run pallets on these machines, you have to have a, a special docking station to get the pallet on top of it. Eh? Fantastic. So I, I would just like to add to say, there are two trends in this ICA show here. There's mainly palletizing robots, and then it's mobile robots. That are the two different uh, topics. Huh? Now we have moved to uh, another booth, uh, Miyakoshi. So, Miyakoshi, yeah. One of the also bigger Japanese press manufacturers. Huh? And, and this, is, this robot looks entirely different from the others we've seen. Yeah, because this is like the other ones we're going to see. This is a palletizing robot. I call, uh, I call this one here from Yaskava a hybrid cobot, because it can run in cobot mode, which is that you don't need a fence, the robot will stop when you touch you, or it can run in industrial robot mode, then you need a scanner on it, and then it will go much, much faster. Eh? So when you talk about cobots and robots, that is basically whether you have to fence it or not fence it. You can say that that's a big difference. Eh? The cobots basically need, need, need no fence because they stop about when you touch it. Eh? Yeah. And that, that also gives the uh, how shall we say, the, the limitation, yeah. that the more payload, the faster the speed, the more difficult it is to stop immediately. If you're t So therefore, industrial robots can have hundreds of kilos payload. You cannot have a cobot with that. The, the most powerful cobots today will have 130 kilo. Okay. That, that's the top. And what is, uh, because you, you mentioned that uh, it has a special kind of uh, handling here. What is it special about This it? is a very, very special Grima from Ijima in Japan. Huh? And you will see, it's a kind of a tongue coming out like a rolling band, so you don't scratch the... Oh, the, coming now, yeah, okay. You can see, and now, now you can see, dip, and now you have a gripper under it, yeah. and now it's retracting, huh? <laughs> you do, 
So what did he do? I, could, yeah. I didn't even see it. Yeah. So is it like a... It's a choo-choo coming out like a, a tongue from really? an animal, yeah. Oh, okay. Like, uh, so it has like some kind of softness to it or? Yeah, it, okay. uh, it, it's a band. It's a band, so, okay. So now you have it and then you have... Uh, oh yeah, oh, okay, I see, yeah. And, and the advantage is of course that you don't have to stress the material too much, Exactly, right? yeah. you don't scratch the material, huh? Yeah. And that, and that is special for this solution? Uh, this is a special Miyakoshi yeah. and uh, you can scrap see it's well written Ijima. But uh, this is, JTEC is a system integrator, but uh, it's a special patented gripper from that Japanese company. Fantastic. So uh, I can s I, I get more and more into why you're yeah. so fascinated by robots. Yeah, yes, and you can say, as we said before, the robot is such a stupid. Everything here is related to how do you program it and how are the grippers. Fantastic. So let's move on, Henrik. Yes, yeah. good. So Henrik, uh, now we are with our friends from Horizon, uh, and um, you see a complete solution where you have a feeder, a you folding, have a folding machine. machine. Yeah and a stacker, and a delivery, and a robot. Yeah, and, and this is, I mean, this is again, slightly different from the, the previous one we saw. You, you mentioned in the other one that they had this uh, ribbon that was kind of like a tongue, right? Exactly, and this is another kind of gripper where you can see there are some forks going in under, yeah. and then it's clamping on the top. Huh? Yeah. And again, this is a cobot, this is a Fanuc cobot, yeah. and it can handle 20 kilos, and um, the, the core of the matter here is that the system shall be uh, uh, approved yeah. for touching. Huh? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, but if you but if you look at a solution like this, because it seems that the Horizon is one of the uh, binding uh, OEMs that are investing a lot of money in robot technology right now. Yeah. Is I mean, this is also because of work environment that you have. Uh, you you don't stress your employees to. Uh, to, to you remove to, the heavy lifts. Yeah, huh? yeah. And, and of course you also get into the situation that you can run two or you can run three folder lines parallel with one operator yeah. because the feeding is automatic and the delivery is automatic. Yeah? Yeah. So if you look at the printing industry right now, we have seen uh, the, the sheets, we have seen the transport and we have seen uh, the palletizing. Is that the three main areas in... Uh... The, the main area now is uh, palletizing, palletizing of stacks of sheets and then it's uh, the mobile robots. These are the two big trends in this IGA show here. Fantastic, nice to and, see, right? And this here is also, as we talked about with the Yaskava, this is a hybrid cobot. So it has a cobot mode and a robot mode. So without the scanner, it can run faster. Huh? So Henrik, we have already now been talking about the transportation and, and you mentioned that the first one we saw, the orange one with the Horizon one, was an AMR. Yeah. Now we are with what is what you refer to as an ATV, yes. which has the fork, the fork knives here. Fork but but here. The, this is probably a mixture. Huh? A mixture, so, okay. so this is an a ATV because in my definition it has forks, yeah. but it is running on, on an autonomous, autonomous navigation system where the original ATVs ran on a wire or with a laser scanner. This here is running just like the AMRs with a computer controlled uh, software inside and a big navigation system. Eh? And when you look at a solution like this, for example, uh, this obviously has the fork so it can be used for pallets. Is that typically for like bigger printing companies? Because I mean, if you run digital print only, and let's say smaller toner based print, you typically have sheets that you take out of a drawer or... Yeah, or but, uh, but you can have, you can have AMRs also as a platforms which can come up to several thousand kilos. Eh? And a typical 40 inch pallet is around 750 kilos. So there's no big topic for the AMR, like the, or, like the orange ones, if it's big enough to run pallets, but it's, it's requiring a docking station. And this here is based to, they, they are config, configured to work with old pallets. So you can run the forks under the pallet, just like a conventional pallet system. Eh? So as with everything else we talk about in the industry, it's always about the applications. You can yes. buy, basically you invest depending on your needs you have. Yes, and I would call this here the law of less resistance because as the printers are used, the print shops are used to run conventional pallets. This here is fitting perfect into a conventional pallet solution. Eh? But would you say the AMRs are smarter if you're not conventional? I would say the AMRs are smarter because you can turn the AMR around your center point. Eh? You, you need much more space to turn the forklift with a pallet on, eh? 
So a smaller printing company with smaller foot space would basically choose the MR if they are brave enough to choose Except a different... Except that all the printers I met, big or small, will complain they have not space enough. So you will have very small corridors between the presses and between printing and finishing. So the compact format of the AMRs are much better, in my opinion, for this year. But you have the problem about how to handle the pallets. And with the forks, you have no problem with handling pallets. Huh? So, Henrik, uh, this is uh, the last of the robots on this little uh, tour of the IGAS. Um, we're actually moving to another friend of uh, ours both. Uh, this is the Cobo stack, and what basically we see here is a... Uh, this is a cobot, not a robot, because per your definition earlier, this has a limited lifting weight. It has no fence, and if you touch it, it stops immediately. Exactly. And this is uh, typically a palletizer that is uh, brand new from um, uh, MBO. So what is special about this one? Well, uh, I would start to say, you said the last stopper. Uh, this is, in fact, the first one in the market with a palletizing system. And uh, it has been very popular, and MBO has around 150 uh, lines out running now, mainly in Europe. So this is a Japanese in introduction. Uh. This is made with a Danish uh, robot, Universal Robot, and this is only a cobot. So the name is Universal Robot, but they only make cobots. Huh? And this cannot run robot mode, so because it's small, compact, small motors and so on, so it can only do the slow speed of the cobot. But, but that is, you know, as we spoke about before, it's like when you produce a solution where you need a robot, the application decides what kind of robot or cobot you use for it, right? So for having something where you take this application is that you feed it with a sheet, you fold it, and then you have the folded sheets or the signatures, yes. and you take it out and put it either on a pallet or in a box, right? Yes, and this robot is more than uh, powerful enough for these exercises. Precisely, and that was what this, I meant, yeah. yeah. And that was how uh, MPO also approached this here. Yeah. They looked at the solution and came up with this robot as, as the right one for it. Huh? We have seen on now, both on uh, the was it the, 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 the one with the Mia Kosha, Mia Kosha, and, and we see with the, the Horizon. And we now see it here, it's three different grippers. Yeah, uh, because uh, the grip, as we talked about before, the robot dash cobot is stupid. Without the programming and without the gripper. That's the two important uh, approaches. Huh? And what, uh, what happened here was that uh, MBO found this gripper and has patented it, because that's a good, that's, that's a good way of taking it out of the stacker. This robot doesn't run without MBO special stacker. Huh? What would be very nice in the future was, of course, to be rid of the stacker, but nobody has been able to do that yet. Huh? So this is a combination, stacker plus gripper makes a system. But that is basically because it needs to communicate throughout the entire process, therefore it needs to be integrated into the stacker, right? Uh, right now it, at least, I mean. Uh, it, it needs to be integrated into the stacker, because the stack has to be in a specific position to work with so this gripper. So it knows exactly where it is yeah. at that point so, given time. And, yeah. and it's all like that. MBO has different sizes of grippers, depending on what kind of products they are running. Eh? And one of the things there, uh, because uh, you and I were also with the MBO in Portugal, yes. uh, and it was quite amazing to see the factory, of course, but it was also the demos they did showing that it is actually something that, you know, really kind of... Uh, uh, increases the productivity of a printing company because you, I was I think we spoke to this Swedish printer that invested yeah. in one yeah. and you, they could have no, like, young bears in Klippan, huh? yeah and there was like two operators for three machines right or was no, one no, operator? not with a robot no, no, but the, you still need to feed it you still need to take uh, make sure that it runs the, right if or? you can run two three palletizing to two three folding uh, palletizing lines with one operator with this this me you roll the pallet in, and the robot will palletize everything. So uh, the robot here is more than powerful enough to pallet on both sides, so you can run non-stop in this here. And of course, the robot is taking the heavy jobs, the heavy lifts away for the operator, which means that it's also a much better working environment. Huh? Fantastic. Henrik, uh, thank you for guiding us into the fascinating world of uh, cobots and robots, yes. AMRs and AGVs. So uh, thank you very thank much, you. my friend. Thanks.